So when you say Ireland Patrick's Day to a person, they'll immediately answer back with oh, leprechauns. And I suppose for a long time, I disassociated myself with leprechauns. I found them a little bit crass, a little bit funny, a little, just not really the emblem of, of Celtic Ireland. But of course, a lot of people are asking me about Patrick's Day, so I really wanted to make a video. And when I started to research leprechauns, I was so excited about what I found. There are so many different ideas about where the word leprechaun comes from, but one train of thought is the god Lu. Now, Lu was the Celtic Apollo. He was the sun god. And there's a great story about how Lu was born, and you can see that video now. I like doing that. Uh, so then when the Christian monks came over and were reapprising Irish history, and they turned the goddess Bridget into Saint Bridget, they diminished Lu in stature and in the people's minds. And he became Lu Chromon, which meant kind of hunched over Lu. So Lu is the god of art and inspiration. And the leprechaun started out as a shoemaker. And that's how you knew when a uh, leprechaun was about, you'd hear the, the tapping of his hammer, making shoes for the fairies. For the fairies. And of course then, the leprechaun character... Uh, he was Lou who was uh, made fun of, so he was smaller, he was ugly, and that's the way he's been portrayed. But of course, Irish people went all over the world, and to keep their home in their heart, they kept their stories, they kept their folklore, and they told these stories to their children and their children's children. Now we have leprechauns in Hollywood, they've made films, there's a horror movie about leprechauns, there's a gay leprechaun on YouTube, which is another interesting idea. We also have breakfast cereals, uh, the Lucky Charms. So the leprechaun has become prevalent in the global folklore, probably much more than Patrick. So now, I, when I hear the word leprechaun, I think of the god Lou, and when I see people dressed up and going, mind, you know, mind me pot of gold, and they've got the red hair and the green jacket and the whole lot, it, it shows me that Celtic Ireland isn't dead. It, it survived, and in such a way, because the, the leprechaun was created to get rid of the memory of Lou, but it has survived. He has survived. Much more than Patrick has, because, let's face it, Patrick's Day is really Irish Day. But the leprechaun is still very prevalent, and that's why I'm embracing my inner leprechaun. I'm back inside. So the leprechaun is another way of expressing the sun god. And the leprechaun always has a pot of gold, gold and sunshine, there is a connection there. So, and the rainbow as well, which is... In the Norse stories, the rainbow is a bridge into the other worlds. So what we're going to make is a little sun, rainbow, lucky charms, little holder. You can put all your lucky charms on it. So I have a sheet of graph paper here. And I'm using a plate, not to make a full circle, but a partial one. It doesn't have to be half. Again, the measurements don't matter. You could have more of a circle or less. This just looks right to me. So there's our circle. And this is the middle line. So now I'm going to use a protractor. You can do it freehand, but I'm going to use a protractor. And these are degrees, it's not to 360, so I'm going to use the middle line and every second one after that. From the centre, using that mark, I'm going to draw up a little bit outside the circle for all of them. They don't have to be the same length outside the circle, but fairly similar. So freehand, I'm going to go a zigzag, a little bit in and connect up, a little bit in and connect up. A so here I have my sun shape and I'm going to trace it out on a cardboard box, a nice strong corrugated. And with the corrugated box, I'm going to cut one piece out with the cor corrugation going up and down. But the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out with the corrugation going the other way and that does help to strengthen up your piece. 
and I'm also going to leave a shelf here and if you didn't have a natural flap happening I'd move up and just draw on my flap. I'll glue the two pieces down and leave that to dry. So I've all the edges covered in masking tape but one I want to bring this shelf up now so it sits sits like that so there is a bit of a spring in it so what I'm going to do is make a hole I have a little punch but you can use a nail or whatever you have so we have four sets of holes and now I have some string here and as you know it can be very hard to get string through the hole so what I'm doing is I've got a little bit of um, the masking tape again I'm slicing it down so it's just a little piece I'm wrapping so basically it's like a little needle it's just that bit stronger so from the back I'm going to push it through and then through the other one now what I'm going to do is give it a good bit because you don't want to use that now I'll snip that off at the very end so I have that now so I'm going to turn this this way and tie it as tight as I can Ooh, give it a double knot and there we go so it doesn't move anymore you can snip off the excess or if you want to be sure to be sure as we say or like a hogla you could get a strip of masking tape and run it along and what I'm going to do now while I am is I'm going to put one at the top so now to get rid of these little seams of the masking paper and just really give it a give it a skin over everything I'm going to give it a coat of paper mache now usually I'd use newspaper but today I'm using tissue paper so with the tissue paper I'm going to use PVA glue and I just got some tissue paper here I think I got this in a shoe box and it's nice the tissue paper is kind of um, scrunched up already because that gives it a nice texture and bring it down use plenty of glue so I'm going to go all over with the tissue paper the back as well just to make sure everything's nice and secure so the paper mache is now dry and what I'm going to do is rather than start with the gold paint I'm going to give it a little coat of orange first it brings up the gold because the gold by its nature is a little bit transparent so you do need to give it a little base color and it helps now I don't want to go over the Ferrero Rocher but I might do a little bit but you can see that stuck down as well again you don't have to be too careful with this it really is to get the paint on and a, just a good coat so my base color is dry now and I, I've lost out on editing but this piece of gold is a piece of sweet paper that you can use as well like a paper mache and cover it in those pieces but today I'm going to use this acrylic paint and I just love it it's fantastic and just straight from the pot so the gold paint is dry I'm going to give it all now a good coat of PVA and I have my rainbow from the other video glued down so I'm also putting a good coat at the edges now I've um, a few pieces here the gold and kind of coppery colored sequences I'll just put a few here and there I have a bit of gold glitter and I have a little bit of beautiful kind of acid green glitter leave it dry you can hang it up somewhere and put all your little good look emblems on the side but I'm going to show you what I've been doing so we've gone from Lou the Sun God down to the leprechaun and I've had such fun making these guys they could be called leprechauns or olerechauns their little staffs are made of gorse because gorse is very much connected to gold in Irish folklore it's often said that gold is buried underneath where the furs grow but when you see the blossom of furs you can see how gold is connected to it so you can see now how you're I can put my leprechaun on here. I made a pot of gold out of a little candle holder, you know, the tinfoil ones. It needed two coats of black acrylic 
and I put some gold paper there for your crock of gold. And they also have a little lump of white quartz, which, which growing up we always called fairy stone, and I got it in a beautiful river. And I even went a step further. I made this guy a little house, and I had such fun with it. I'm definitely going to make some more. I just really enjoyed it. You can have fun with all the plants. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll give a link below to the online shop if you want to buy some of the leprechauns. And I'm straight away going into Easter and eggs. Slán anish agus garev maha